I'm standing right next to the braised pan, and he says they braised for for two hours. Oh, that's just a swimming pool. That's a jacuzzi of braised chicken. Wow. What's up, squad? Welcome back to Street Food with Senpai. We're headed to Hong Kong, the one in China, to make soy sauce chicken, or as Mark Weens has dubbed it, jacuzzi chicken. Succulent, plump chicken braised in a cauldron of aromatics and spices. Contrary to popular belief, chicken does not have to be fried to be delicious. After we time lapse through our prep, we head outside to our space walk, donated by the kind humanoids at Area 51. Over medium heat, add one cup of oil, followed by one cup sliced ginger, eight shallots quartered, 12 12 cut up scallions and one cup of garlic cloves, stirring 15 to 22 times. Next, add eight star anise, four leaves of bay, four sticks of cinnamon, eight fresh orange peels, and then give that a stir. Next goes in four cups of light soy sauce, three cups of dark soy sauce, three cups Shaoxing wine, and 12 cups of suspiciously colored water. I swear, man, it was just the container. Then two cups of brown sugar and chicken powder, AKA undercover MSG, two tablespoons. Bring that up to a gentle simmer and give the chicken elixir a sippy. Tastes pretty Chinese to me, so in goes our chiclets, around three pounds each. Originally, we were gonna do like eight, but I think four is a good number. One each for everyone in the studio to take home. Give it a few whirlpools and a few ladles over the top for good fortune. And then say farewell to your favorite chicken. You want the temperature to be around 170 to ensure it's juicy meat. For the absolute best results, you would cook this and then chill the entire thing till the next day. Around 50 minutes later, we'll come borrow one chicken and four cups of the braising liquid. Fair warning, you are gonna have a ton of this liquid. So you can make this sauce once and keep using that same liquid up to three times. Drain the liquid into a pot and get a good amount of it everywhere. Once you see it start spilling, just commit to the pour. We just don't give up halfway here in the BCU. Set that pot as hot as it goes and just walk away. You want about half cup of it to boil over because we just don't want too much sauce. These last two steps are optional. <laughs> the hell decided to give this guy his own show. Mix in a cornstarch slurry one tablespoon at a time. That's just equal parts water and cornstarch. Once the sauce is thicker but not a gravy, set that to the side and onto our easiest side dish. Add baby bok choy to heavily salted boiling water. Just 30 seconds and it'll be perfect. Set that aside and we'll go peep out this chicken. My dudes, the smell in the studio? Smelling like the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Separate the legs, thighs, and wings and cut the breast in half. As you see, you don't even need a knife to cut this. You can cleave her right through the bones, but removing the chest plate will make it much easier to eat. Chop, chop, chop. Man, look at them juicy John. Stop playing with me. To plate up this beauty, line a plate with plenty of white rice. Layer the chicken on top, followed by the bok choys along the side. Lay on that magic sauce and be generous with it. Get your bok choy a little wet too if you're a naughty boy. And it's time to visit Flavor Town. This is pretty dope for what's essentially boiled chicken. I'm just gonna start throwing cinnamon and star anise and everything. Gonna be making some real crunchy grilled cheese. The sugar balances out all that soy sauce and all the aromatics synergize so well. A lot of bit of ginger and garlic never hurt anybody. And it's good for the old six pack. Now let me show you a realistic at home version. In a tall but not too wide pot, saute a quarter cup garlic cloves, quarter cup sliced ginger, and two shallots sliced. The size of the veggies don't matter, we're just extracting all that flavor. Once they're nice and caramelized, maybe three minutes later, add three quarter cups dark soy, one cup light soy, three quarters cup Shaoxing wine, three cups of water, half a cup of dark brown sugar, two orange peels, all them green onions that we're hiding, and all your spices. Now red food coloring is optional, but visually it does make the chicken look super dope. Tuck in your chicken and then top off with water if you need to. Place a lid on it and cook it at 170 for about 50 minutes. While that jacuzzi's up, let's prep some hand-torn cabbage. Grab you some thick bacon and cut a quarter cup's worth of lardons or thick pieces. For the sauce, mix one tablespoon light soy sauce, one tablespoon Chinese black vinegar, half a tablespoon sugar, half a tablespoon cornstarch, half a tablespoon chicken powder or MSG, and Sichuan peppercorns. I prefer the green ones a lot because they're way more aromatic and they don't obliterate my tongue. In a wide pan over medium heat, add your bacon, which I cut way too much of, but too much bacon is a myth, right? So I just added it all anyways. Once that's fully rendered, about four to five minutes, add four sliced garlic cloves, quarter inch of ginger, three dried chilies, and one scallion cut into two inch pieces. Stir that really quick and then add your Napa cabbage. You wanna do about half a head's worth torn into two inch pieces. Stir that from top to bottom to disperse the heat evenly. Once it's half wilted, add your sauce and then combine it super quickly. It should thicken almost immediately and boom, you are done. Good stuff, dude. The last side dish we're gonna make, broccoli and garlic sauce is even easier. 
In a small container, mix one tablespoon oyster sauce, one tablespoon light soy sauce, two tablespoons water, one teaspoon sesame oil, quarter teaspoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of cornstarch and set that aside. Next, bring a large pot of boiling salted water to a well of boil and blanch half a pound of broccoli heads. Just in and out real quick to prevent overcooking. Next, heat up a saucepan with two tablespoons of oil, one sliced red chili, the whites of two scallions, and four minced garlic cloves. Saute that for two to three minutes, then add in your broccoli along with your sauce. Cook that whole thing over medium for two more minutes until the sauce thickens. And that's it, son, you're killing it. We'll take a peeper at this chicken and she is looking juicy as a mug. Then reduce some sauce, same as before. Two cups of the braising liquid and about two to three tablespoons of slurry. Spilling it everywhere is optional. Cut up that beautifully red chicken and sauce them johns up. What's up Costco, how you like that? Assemble all the goodies and try to build that ultimate bite. And if you fail at first, you can just give up. It's okay. Not gonna lie, this chicken is banging, but these side dishes? So much texture and different pops of flavor like that green Sichuan. Yeah. If you want the chicken super red, you'll want to completely cool it in the liquid and stick it in the fridge overnight. But personally, I'm not a fan of 24-hour recipes. Alvin. <laughs> and this feast right here tastes just fine.